Subsection 1.4.4 Two Thousands The Beatles' One, a compilation album of the band's British and American number one hits, was released on 13 November 2000. It became the fastest-selling album of all time, with 3.6 million sold in its first week and 13 million within a month. It topped albums charts in at least 28 countries, including the UK and US. As of April 2009, the compilation had sold 31 million copies globally and was the best-selling album of the decade in the United States. Harrison died from metastatic lung cancer in November 2001. McCartney and Starr were among the musicians who performed at the Concert for George, organized by Eric Clapton and Harrison's widow, Olivia. The tribute event took place at the Royal Albert Hall on the first anniversary of Harrison's death. In addition to songs he composed for the group and during his solo career, the concert included a celebration of Indian classical music, which had significantly influenced Harrison. In 2003, Let It Be, Naked, a reconceived version of the Let It Be album, with McCartney supervising production, was released. One of the main differences with the Spectre-produced version was the omission of the original string arrangements. It was a top ten hit in both Britain and America. The U.S. album configurations from 1964 to 65 were released as box sets in 2004 and 2006. The Capitol Albums, Volume 1 and Volume 2, included both stereo and mono versions based on the mixes that were prepared for vinyl at the time of the music's original American release. As a soundtrack for Cirque du Soleil's Las Vegas Beatles stage review, Love, George Martin and his son Giles remixed and blended 130 of the band's recordings to create what Martin called, quote, a way of reliving the whole Beatles' musical lifespan in a very condensed period, close quote. The show premiered in June 2006, and the Love album was released that November when McCartney discussed his hope that Carnival of Light, a 14-minute experimental recording made at Abbey Road in 1967, would receive an official release. A rare live performance involving two ex-Beatles took place in April 2009 at a benefit concert organized by McCartney at New York's Radio City Music Hall, where he was joined by Starr for three songs. On 9 September 2009, the Beatles' entire back catalog was reissued following an extensive digital remastering process that lasted four years. Stereo editions of all 12 original UK studio albums, along with Magical Mystery Tour and the Past Masters compilation, were released on compact disc, both individually and as a box set. Comparing the new releases with the 1987 CDs, which had been widely criticized for their lack of clarity and dynamism, Mojo's Danny Eccleston wrote, quote, The remastered vocals are purer, more natural sounding, and give the illusion of sitting slightly higher in the mix. Close quote. A second collection, The Beatles in Mono, included remastered versions of every Beatles album released in true mono, along with the original 1965 stereo mixes of Help and Rubber Soul, which Martin had remixed for the 1987 editions. The Beatles' Rock Band, a music video game in the Rock Band series, was issued on the same day. In December 2009, the band's catalog was officially released in FLAC and MP3 format in a limited edition of 30,000 USB flash drives. Subsection 1.4.5 2010s Owing to a long-running royalty disagreement, the Beatles were among the last major artists to sign deals with online music services. Residual disagreement emanating from Apple Corps dispute with Apple Inc., iTunes owners, over the use of the name Apple 
was also partly responsible for the delay. Although in 2008, McCartney stated that the main obstacle to making the Beatles catalog available online was that EMI, quote, wants something we're not prepared to give them, close quote. In 2010, the official canon of 13 Beatles studio albums, Past Masters, and the Red and Blue Greatest Hits albums were made available on iTunes. In 2012, EMI's recorded music operations were sold to Universal Music Group. In order for Universal Music to acquire EMI, the European Union, for antitrust reasons, forced EMI to spin off assets, including Parlophone. Universal was allowed to keep the Beatles' recorded music catalog managed by Capitol Records under its Capitol Music Group division. Also in 2012, the entire original Beatles album catalog was reissued on vinyl, available either individually or as a box set. In 2013, a second volume of BBC recordings entitled On Air, Live at the BBC, Volume 2, was released. December of that year saw the release of another 59 Beatles recordings on iTunes. The set, titled The Beatles Bootleg Recordings, 1963, had the opportunity to gain a 70-year copyright extension, conditional on the songs being published at least once before the end of 2013. Apple Records released the recordings on 17 December to prevent them from going into the public domain and had them taken down from iTunes later that same day. Fan reactions to the release were mixed, with one blogger saying, quote, The hardcore Beatles collectors who are trying to obtain everything will already have these. Close quote. On 26 January 2014, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr performed McCartney's Queenie Eye in Los Angeles at the 56th Annual Grammy Awards, held in the Los Angeles Convention Center's West Hall. The following day, The Night That Changed America, a Grammy Salute to the Beatles television special, was taped in the same hall. It aired on 9 February, the exact date of, and at the same time, and on the same network as, the original broadcast of the Beatles' first U.S. television appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show 50 years earlier. The special included performances of Beatles songs by current artists, as well as by McCartney and Starr, archival footage, and Paul and Ringo being interviewed by David Letterman at the Ed Sullivan Theater, site of The Ed Sullivan Show. Part 2. Musical Style and Development. Lennon McCartney. In Icons of Rock, an encyclopedia of the legends who changed music forever, Scott Schinder and Andy Schwartz describe the Beatles' musical evolution. In their initial incarnation as cheerful, wisecracking mop tops, the Fab Four revolutionized the sound, style, and attitude of popular music and opened rock and roll's doors to a tidal wave of British rock acts. Their initial impact would have been enough to establish the Beatles as one of their era's most influential cultural forces. But they didn't stop there. Although their initial style was a highly original, irresistibly catchy synthesis of early American rock and roll and R&B, the Beatles spent the rest of the 1960s expanding rock's stylistic frontiers, consistently staking out new musical territory on each release. The band's increasingly sophisticated experimentation encompassed a variety of genres, including folk rock, country, psychedelia, and Baroque pop, without sacrificing the effortless mass appeal of their early work. In The Beatles as Musicians, Walter Everett describes Lennon and McCartney's contrasting motivations and approaches to composition. Quote, McCartney may be said to have constantly developed, as a means to entertain, a focused musical talent with an ear for counterpoint and other aspects of craft 
in the demonstration of a universally agreed-upon common language that he did much to enrich. Conversely, Lenin's mature music is best appreciated as the daring product of a largely unconscious, searching but undisciplined artistic sensibility. Close quote. Ian MacDonald describes McCartney as, quote, a natural melodist, a creator of tunes capable of existing apart from their harmony, close quote. His melody lines are characterized as primarily, quote, vertical, close quote, employing wide, consonant intervals which express his, quote, extrovert energy and optimism, close quote. Conversely, Lennon's, quote, sedentary, ironic personality, close quote, is reflected in a, quote, horizontal, close quote, approach, featuring minimal, dissonant intervals and repetitive melodies which rely on their harmonic accompaniment for interest. Quote, basically a realist, he instinctively kept his melodies close to the rhythms and cadences of speech, coloring his lyrics with bluesy tone and harmony rather than creating tunes that made striking shapes of their own. Close quote. MacDonald praises Harrison's lead guitar work for the role his, quote, characterful lines and textural colorings, close quote, play in supporting Lennon and McCartney's parts, and describes Starr as, quote, the father of modern pop rock drumming, close quote. Section 2.1, Influences. The band's earliest influences include Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, Little Richard, and Chuck Berry. During the Beatles' co-residency with Little Richard at the Star Club in Hamburg from April to May 1962, he advised them on the proper technique for performing his songs. Of Presley, Lennon said, quote, Nothing really affected me until I heard Elvis. If there hadn't been Elvis, there would not have been the Beatles. Close quote. Other early influences include Buddy Holly, Eddie Cochran, Roy Orbison, and the Everly Brothers. The Beatles continued to absorb influences long after their initial success, often finding new musical and lyrical avenues by listening to their contemporaries, including Bob Dylan, Frank Zappa, The Lovin' Spoonful, The Birds, and The Beach Boys, whose 1966 album Pet Sounds amazed and inspired McCartney. Martin stated, quote, No one made a greater impact on the Beatles than Brian Wilson. Close quote. Ravi Shankar, with whom Harrison studied for six weeks in India in late 1966, had a significant effect on his musical development during the band's later years. Section 2.2 Genres. Originating as a skiffle group, the Beatles quickly embraced 1950s rock and roll and helped pioneer the Mersey Beat genre, and their repertoire ultimately expanded to include a broad variety of pop music. Reflecting the range of styles they explored, Lennon said of Beatles for Sale, quote, You could call our new one a Beatles country and western LP, close quote. While Gould credits Rubber Soul as, quote, the instrument by which legions of folk music enthusiasts were coaxed into the camp of pop. Close quote. Although the 1965 song Yesterday was not the first pop record to employ orchestral strings, it marked the group's first recorded use of classical music elements. Gould observes quote, The more traditional sound of strings allowed for a fresh appreciation of their talent as composers by listeners who were otherwise allergic to the din of drums and electric guitars, close quote. They continued to experiment with string arrangements to various effect. Sgt. Pepper's She's Leaving Home, for instance, is, quote, cast in the mold of a sentimental Victorian ballad, close quote, Gould writes. Quote, its words and music filled with the clichés of musical melodrama, close quote. The band's stylistic range expanded in another direction with their 1966 B-side, Rain, described by Martin Strong as, quote, the first overtly psychedelic Beatles record, close quote. 
Other psychedelic numbers followed, such as Tomorrow Never Knows, recorded before rain, Strawberry Fields Forever, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and I Am the Walrus. The influence of Indian classical music was evident in Harrison's The Inner Light, Love You Too, and Within You, Without You. Gould describes the latter two as attempts, quote, to replicate the raga form in miniature, close quote. Innovation was the most striking feature of their creative evolution, according to music historian and pianist Michael Campbell. Quote, A day in the life encapsulates the art and achievement of the Beatles as well as any single track can. It highlights key features of their music, the sound imagination, the persistence of tuneful melody, and the close coordination between words and music. It represents a new category of song, more sophisticated than pop and uniquely innovative. There literally had never before been a song, classical or vernacular, that had blended so many disparate elements so imaginatively. Close quote. Philosophy professor Bruce Ellis Benson agrees, quote, The Beatles give us a wonderful example of how such far-ranging influences as Celtic music, rhythm and blues, and country and western could be put together in a new way, close quote. Author Dominic Pedler describes the way they crossed musical styles, quote, far from moving sequentially from one genre to another, as is sometimes conveniently suggested, the group maintained in parallel their mastery of the traditional, catchy chart hit, while simultaneously forging rock and dabbling with a wide range of peripheral influences, from country to vaudeville. One of these threads was their take on folk music, which would form such essential groundwork for their later collisions with Indian music and philosophy." Close quote. As the personal relationships between the band members grew increasingly strained, their individual tastes became more apparent. The minimalistic cover artwork for the White Album contrasted with the complexity and diversity of its music, which encompassed Lennon's Revolution 9, whose musique concrète approach was influenced by Yoko Ono, Starr's country song Don't Pass Me By, Harrison's rock ballad While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and the, quote, proto-metal roar, close quote, of McCartney's Helter Skelter. Section 2.3 contribution of George Martin. George Martin's close involvement in his role as producer made him one of the leading candidates for the informal title of the, quote, fifth Beatle, close quote. He applied his classical music training in various ways and functioned as, quote, an informal music teacher, close quote, to the progressing songwriters, according to Gould. Martin suggested to a skeptical McCartney that the arrangement of yesterday should feature a string quartet accompaniment, thereby introducing the Beatles to a, quote, hitherto unsuspected world of classical instrumental color, close quote, in McDonald's description. Their creative development was also facilitated by Martin's willingness to experiment in response to their suggestions, such as adding, quote, something Baroque, close quote, to a particular recording. In addition to scoring orchestral arrangements for recordings, Martin often performed on them, playing instruments including piano, organ, and brass. Collaborating with Lennon and McCartney required Martin to adapt to their different approaches to songwriting and recording. MacDonald comments, quote, While he worked more naturally with the conventionally articulate McCartney, the challenge of catering to Lennon's intuitive approach generally spurred him to his more original arrangements, of which being for the benefit of Mr. Kite is an outstanding example. Close quote. Martin said of the two composers' distinct songwriting styles and his own stabilizing influence, compared with Paul's songs, all of which seemed to keep in some sort of touch with reality, John had a psychedelic, almost mystical quality. John's imagery is one of the best things about his work. Tangerine trees, marmalade skies, cellophane flowers, 
I always saw him as an aural Salvador Dali, rather than some drug-ridden record artist. On the other hand, I would be stupid to pretend that drugs didn't figure quite heavily in the Beatles' lives at that time. They knew that I, in my schoolmasterly role, didn't approve. Not only was I not into it myself, I couldn't see the need for it. And there's no doubt that, if I too had been on dope, Pepper would never have been the album it was. Perhaps it was the combination of dope and no dope that worked. Who knows? Harrison echoed Martin's description of his stabilizing role. Quote, I think we just grew through those years together, him as the straight man and us as the loonies, but he was always there for us to interpret our madness. We used to be slightly avant-garde on certain days of the week, and he would be there as the anchor person to communicate that through the engineers and on to the tape. Close quote. Section 2.4 In the Studio See also The Beatles' Recording Technology Making innovative use of technology while expanding the possibilities of recorded music, the Beatles urged experimentation by Martin and his recording engineers. Seeking ways to put chance occurrences to creative use, accidental guitar feedback, a resonating glass bottle, a tape loaded the wrong way round so that it played backwards, any of these might be incorporated into their music. Their desire to create new sounds on every new recording, combined with Martin's arranging abilities and the studio expertise of EMI staff engineers Norman Smith, Ken Townsend, and Jeff Emmerich, all contributed significantly to their records, from Rubber Soul and especially Revolver onwards. Along with innovative studio techniques, such as sound effects, unconventional microphone placements, tape loops, double tracking, and vary speed recording, the Beatles augmented their songs with instruments that were unconventional in rock music at the time. These included string and brass ensembles, as well as Indian instruments, such as the sitar in Norwegian wood, and the svarmandal in Strawberry Fields Forever. They also used early electronic instruments, such as the Mellotron, with which McCartney supplied the flute voices on the Strawberry Fields intro, and the Claveline, an electric keyboard that created the unusual oboe-like sound on Baby, You're a Rich Man. Part 3. Legacy. See also The Beatles' Influence on Popular Culture. Former Rolling Stone associate editor Robert Greenfield compared the Beatles to Picasso as, quote, artists who broke through the constraints of their time period to come up with something that was unique and original. In the form of popular music, no one will ever be more revolutionary, more creative, and more distinctive, close quote. They not only sparked the British invasion of the U.S., they became a globally influential phenomenon as well. From the 1920s, the United States had dominated popular entertainment culture throughout much of the world, via Hollywood movies, jazz, the music of Broadway and Tin Pan Alley, and later, the rock and roll that first emerged in Memphis, Tennessee. Their musical innovations and commercial success inspired musicians worldwide, Many artists have acknowledged the Beatles' influence and enjoyed chart success with covers of their songs. On radio, their arrival marked the beginning of a new era. In 1968, the program director of New York's WABC radio station forbade his DJs from playing any pre-Beatles music, marking the defining line of what would be considered oldies on American radio. They helped to redefine the album as something more than just a few hits padded out with filler, and they were primary innovators of the modern music video. The Shea Stadium show with which they opened their 1965 North American tour attracted an estimated 55,600 people, then the largest audience in concert history. Spitz describes the event as a, quote, major breakthrough, a giant step toward reshaping the concert business, close quote. Emulation of their clothing, 
and especially their hairstyles, which became a mark of rebellion, had a global impact on fashion. According to Gould, the Beatles changed the way people listened to popular music and experienced its role in their lives. From what began as the Beatlemania fad, the group's popularity grew into what was seen as an embodiment of sociocultural movements of the decade. As icons of the 1960s counterculture, Gould continues, they became a catalyst for bohemianism and activism in various social and political arenas, fueling movements such as women's liberation, gay liberation, and environmentalism. According to Peter Lavazzoli, after the more popular than Jesus controversy in 1966, the Beatles felt considerable pressure to say the right things and, quote, began a concerted effort to spread a message of wisdom and higher consciousness, close quote. Part 4. Awards and Achievements See also List of Awards and Nominations Received by the Beatles. In 1965, Queen Elizabeth II appointed Lennon, McCartney, Harrison, and Starr members of the Order of the British Empire, MBE. The film Let It Be, 1970, won the 1971 Academy Award for Best Original Song Score. The recipients of seven Grammy Awards and 15 Ivor Novello Awards, the Beatles have been awarded six Diamond albums, as well as 24 multi-platinum albums, 39 platinum albums, and 45 gold albums in the United States. In the UK, the Beatles have four multi-platinum albums, four platinum albums, eight gold albums, and one silver album. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1988. The best-selling band in history, the Beatles have sold between 600 million and, at EMI estimates, over 1 billion units worldwide. They have had more number one albums on the British charts, 15, and sold more singles in the UK, 21.9 million, than any other act. In 2004, Rolling Stone ranked the Beatles as the best artist of all time. They ranked number one on Billboard magazine's list of the all-time most successful Hot 100 artists, released in 2008 to celebrate the U.S. Singles Chart's 50th anniversary. As of 2014, they hold the record for most number one hits on the Billboard Hot 100, with 20. The Recording Industry Association of America certifies that the Beatles have sold 178 million units in the U.S., more than any other artist. They were collectively included in Time Magazine's compilation of the 20th century's 100 Most Influential People. In 2014, they received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Part 5. Members Further information. List of members of bands featuring members of the Beatles. Principal Members John Lennon Vocals, Guitar, Keyboards, 1960 to 1969. Paul McCartney, Vocals, Bass Guitar, Guitar, Keyboards, Drums, 1960 to 1970. George Harrison, Guitar, Vocals, 1960 to 1970. Ringo Starr, Drums, Percussion, Vocals, 1962 to 1970. Early members. Pete Best. Drums, vocals, 1960 to 1962. Stuart Sutcliffe. Bass guitar, vocals, 1960 to 1961. Chaz Newby. Bass guitar, 1960 to 1961. Norman Chapman. Drums. 1960. Tommy Moore, drums, 1960. Touring members, Jimmy Nickel, drums, 1964. Part 6. Discography. Main article, The Beatles' Discography. Further information, list of The Beatles' songs, 
the Beatles' recording sessions, and the Beatles' bootleg recordings. Section 6.1 Original UK LPs Please Please Me, 1963 With the Beatles, 1963 A Hard Day's Night, 1964 Beatles for Sale, 1964 Help, 1965 Rubber Soul, 1965 Revolver, 1966 Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, 1967 The Beatles, The White Album, 1968 Yellow Submarine, 1969 Abbey Road, 1969 Let It Be, 1970 When the above albums were reissued on CDs in 1988, the American Magical Mystery Tour album, 1967, and the double CD compilation set Past Masters were included so the full set would contain every track commercially released in the band's lifetime. See also John Lennon discography, Paul McCartney discography, George Harrison discography, Ringo Starr discography, Collaborations between ex-Beatles. Part 7. Song Catalog. Through 1969, the Beatles catalog was published almost exclusively by Northern Songs Limited, a company formed in February 1963 by music publisher Dick James, specifically for Lennon and McCartney, though it later acquired songs by other artists. The company was organized with James and his partner, Emmanuel Silver, owning a controlling interest variously described as 51% or 50% plus one share. McCartney had 20%. Reports again vary concerning Lennon's portion, 19 or 20%, and Brian Epstein's, 9 or 10%, which he received in lieu of a 25% band management fee. In 1965, the company went public. Five million shares were created, of which the original principals retained 3.75 million. James and Silver each received 937,500 shares, 18.75% of 5 million. Lennon and McCartney each received 750,000 shares, 15%, and Epstein's management company, NEMS Enterprises received 375,000 shares, 7.5%. Of the 1.25 million shares put up for sale, Harrison and Starr each acquired 40,000. At the time of the stock offering, Lennon and McCartney renewed their three-year publishing contracts, binding them to Northern Songs until 1973. Harrison created Harris Songs, to represent his Beatles compositions, but signed a three-year contract with Northern Songs that gave it the copyright to his work through March 1968, which included Taxman and Within You, Without You. The songs on which Starr received co-writing credit before 1968, such as What Goes On and Flying, were also Northern Songs copyrights. Harrison did not renew his contract with Northern Songs when it ended, signing instead with Apple Publishing, while retaining the copyright to his work from that point on. Harris Songs thus owns the rights to his later Beatles songs, such as While My Guitar Gently Weeps and Something. That year as well, Starr created Startling Music, which holds the rights to his Beatles compositions Don't Pass Me By and Octopus's Garden. In March 1969, James arranged to sell his and his partner's shares of Northern Songs to the British broadcasting company Associated Television, ATV, founded by impresario Lou Grade, without first informing the Beatles. The band then made a bid to gain controlling interest by attempting to work out a deal with a consortium of London brokerage firms that had accumulated a 14% holding. The deal collapsed over the objections of Lennon, who declared, quote, 
I'm sick of being fucked about by men in suits sitting on their fat arses in the city. Close quote. By the end of May, ATV had acquired a majority stake in Northern Songs, controlling nearly the entire Lennon McCartney catalog, as well as any future material until 1973. In frustration, Lennon and McCartney sold their shares to ATV in late October 1969. In 1981, financial losses by ATV's parent company, ACC, led it to attempt to sell its music division. According to authors Brian Southall and Rupert Perry, Grade contacted McCartney offering ATV music and Northern songs for $30 million. According to an account McCartney gave in 1995, he met with Grade and explained he was interested solely in the Northern Songs catalog if Grade were ever willing to, quote, separate off, close quote, that portion of ATV music. Soon afterwards, Grade offered to sell him Northern Songs for 20 million pounds, giving the ex-Beatle, quote, a week or so, close quote, to decide. By McCartney's account, he and Ono countered with a five million pound bid that was rejected. According to reports at the time, Grade refused to separate Northern Songs and turned down an offer of 21 to 25 million pounds from McCartney and Ono for ATV music. In 1982, ACC as a whole was sold to Australian business magnate Robert Holmes Accord for 60 million pounds. Three years later, Michael Jackson purchased ATV for a reported $47.5 million. The acquisition gave him control over the publishing rights to more than 200 Beatles songs, as well as 40,000 other copyrights. In 1995, in a deal that earned him a reported $110 million, Jackson merged his music publishing business with Sony, creating a new company, Sony ATV Music Publishing, in which he held a 50% stake. The merger made the new company, then valued at over half a billion dollars, the third largest music publisher in the world. Despite the lack of publishing rights to most of their songs, Lennon's estate and McCartney continued to receive their respective shares of the writer's royalties, which together are 33 and a third percent of total commercial proceeds in the U.S., and which vary elsewhere around the world between 50 and 55 percent. Two of Lennon and McCartney's earliest songs, Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You, were published by an EMI subsidiary, Ardmore and Beechwood, before they signed with James. McCartney acquired their publishing rights from Ardmore in the mid-1980s, and they are the only two Beatles songs owned by McCartney's company, MPL Communications. The Beatles. Background information. Origin. Liverpool, England, United Kingdom. Genres. Rock. Pop. Years active. 1960 to 1970. Labels. Parlophone, Swan, VJ, Capital, United Artists, Apple, Associated Acts, The Quarrymen, Billy Preston, Badfinger, Jackie Lomax, Plastic Ono Band, Website, TheBeatles.com, Past Members, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Ringo Starr. See Members section for others. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at http colon forward slash forward slash creativecommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash by hyphen sa forward slash 3.0 uh, the uh, Beatles uh, uh, the, uh, that's all folks <laughs>